Divers in our Storm Team 29 Weather Center with a check. Yeah, Sean, and uh, as far as the road conditions goes, folks, a lot of those backcountry secondary roads, you know, any locations that haven't been treated, that's where you're going to find the most hazardous travel because this snow is a lighter, uh, drier snow, so it accumulates a little bit easier there on the roadway. So travel really not advised this morning unless maybe it's an emergency. If you would have to go out there, make sure you're experienced driving in snow. You have a four-wheel drive all-wheel drive vehicle as well. I think later this afternoon, though, we are going to see improvements, and we'll get to those details in a moment. But first off, still waiting for some snowfall total measurements to come in here, so send me your reports. I'm checking the National Weather Service as well. Several ways through social media, Facebook and Twitter. You can contact us here at NBC29 or myself there. Also, our email address is weatherpix at NBC29.com, and my email address, cstiver at NBC29 as well. Uh, .com. We'll try and do our best to get those on the air for you. Winter weather advisory remains up for we're pretty much the entire viewing area with the exception of Rockingham and Page counties. This goes through one o'clock this afternoon for many of us. It does go a little bit longer than that for Buckingham County, but I do think it'll probably expire before that set time there for Buckingham County, which is seven o'clock. And then you can see further to our south and east. That's where the pink shades are indicating those winter storm warnings, even a blizzard warning for Virginia Beach and the eastern shore. And again, that's where we anticipate those highest snowfall totals to occur. Right now, our exclusive dual pole triple Doppler radar pretty much everybody seeing snowfall light in nature, but occasionally it might be up to moderate intensity, and we've been seeing that across portions of Buckingham, Fluvanna, Louisa County, maybe even eastern Albemarle County getting into Orange and Culpeper counties there as well. The Piedmont seems to be having the heaviest snow at the moment as we track low pressure continuing to organize off the southeast coast, and that will continue to race northeastward as we go through the day. It is a quick moving system, and that's why we anticipate clearing skies later this afternoon. So again, hazardous travel this morning. I think an additional one to two inches of snow on top of what you've already seen. It will end from west to east starting between 10 a.m. in the valley and latest across the Piedmont there the early afternoon. We're going to have some cold temperatures today. Bundle up if you have to go out there later to clean this all up. Temperatures only in the 20s. We'll have some blowing snow a little later as the breezes pick up. And that will make for some low wind chill values as well. So expected final totals with this storm. No real changes from what we've been saying here over the last 24 hours or so. Generally, the Charlottesville area here, you can see we're in that three inch line zone. You go south and east of there. That's where the amounts may go up a little bit. North and west of there, a little bit less, one to three inches. And far northern reaches of our viewing area, that's where you're talking maybe less than one inch. Current temperatures right now, teens in the valley, low 20s east of the Blue Ridge with the winds occasionally gusting over 10 miles per hour. We have wind chill values right now in the single digits in location. So a very cold day here for us. Our future cast model showing that snow slowly starting to break up, especially once we get to that noon era. There you see a lot of it moving away to our east. Sunshine for the afternoon, but those temperatures stuck in the 20s. Clear skies for tonight into our Sunday morning. I think we'll have single digits in the valley for low temperatures east of the Blue Ridge, lower teens. A sunny day on tap for our Sunday, but temperatures only stuck in the 20s, and it's going to be breezy, making for those low wind chill values. And then another very cold Sunday night and Monday morning. Again, many of us could be down into the single digits. So with these low temperatures and the gusty winds, a wind chill advisory up starts this evening, goes the whole way to tomorrow afternoon, especially across the valley and the higher elevations. That's where you could have those sub zero, sub -zero wind chill values. So definitely dress in layers. If you're going to be out there, folks, you don't want to have any exposed skin to some of that stuff because you could deal with hypothermia and frostbite. Your seven day forecast, the morning snow and then clearing later on highs in the 20s. These very cold overnight lows, cold tomorrow. Breezes gradually subside for the PM sunshine, mostly sunny Monday. We're up to 29 degrees. Finally getting back closer to seasonable Tuesday, a high of 40. Could see an isolated shower there, variable clouds. A little better chance for some showers Tuesday night, Wednesday into Thursday as the mild temps return 50s, maybe even up to 60, Sean, by next Friday and sunny. So that will obviously melt away the snow that we have out there right now. But, uh, you know, interestingly enough, a lot of times here with snowstorms in the area, it warms up quickly after that snow melts away quickly. Not the case with this one. That snow is going to be on the ground for a few days. So you think we'll be keeping an eye out for some of that refreeze out there? Yes, we'll have to watch for that overnight, especially with these temperatures dipping down so low. And again, very important that we bundle up and dress in layers if we go out and about to try and clean all this up after it ends. Absolutely. So. All right, thanks, Clayton. Well, why